special shout out to our sponsor, Qualia. Qualia is the category creating digital closing platform used by thousands of lenders across the country to seamlessly work with their title and escrow partners. By working better together, Qualia is powering lenders to deliver a differentiated closing experience for their clients. Through real-time communications, closing status updates, and workflow management, Qualia brings lenders together with home buyers and sellers, title and escrow agents, and real estate agents for a secure and seamless closing experience. Qualia is proud to have been awarded the Housing Wire Tech 100 Award for real estate as well as CB Insights FinTech 250 Award. Discover how you can work more efficiently with your title and escrow partners at qualia.com forward slash innovators. That's Q-U-A-L-I-A.com forward slash innovators. Greetings, everyone, and welcome. If this is your first time joining us, welcome to the Mortgage Innovators podcast, where we deliver fresh and hopefully fun and entertaining insights on all things mortgage and the innovation propelling our industry forward. I'm Margaret Chiavini, and I am with Caliber Home Loans. And actually, this week, we have a very special episode for you. It actually is a previous um, episode from our Mortgage Innovators Conference. And the topic is the future of data and customer engagement. And we've got two kind of industry greats talking about this topic. We have Josh from Incelerate, who is one of our elite sponsors. And then we have Dirk from Tactile. And they basically dive into the data and they talk about what's the data telling us about customers in the lending market and how we should be adapting our process based on that. So obviously a very, very important uh, topic. So enjoy this episode. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Really appreciate you uh, tuning in. I'm really excited to be here with uh, Dirk Scowl and uh, hear what uh, um, this new technology looks like uh, in the marketplace. And that's kind of what we're talking about here is to kind of reimagine the bar experience. Um, and I think, you know, really need to have uh, Dirk here to talk about what that looks like in a different realm, a different fashion. So we think about the customer experience and a loan, but we're really talking about the consumer experience or just how about the overall experience of people. And that's changing rapidly. We've seen that change in our marketplace. We're seeing that change with how people buy things. We're now going to start seeing that change with how people interact with the world, the world around them, which is going to create new possibilities and it's going to create new avenues for growth. Um, and so, you know, really excited to hear you, what you have to say, Dirk, and just kind of give us an idea of what does the future look like? And what we're talking about is augmented reality. Right, to, you know how we're going to interact with data in the real wild, real world. Then, you know, love to hear what you guys have at uh, Tactile, and you know, give us, uh, you know, let us know what the future looks like. Well, I'll do my best. Thanks, Josh, for the uh, the introduction. Um, really uh, excited to be here. This is not the typical type of conference that I speak at, which which is actually I think very interesting. Um, we live in a, a a world where things are changing rapidly, and in our world. Uh, they're, they're changing because devices are changing. Uh, the types of connectivity are changing to digital uh, information, uh, i.e. 5G and, and broadband. The types of technology that you can use to, uh, to experience digital information, um, uh, such as augmented reality headsets. And then the way that this is affecting um, uh, work and enterprises, large companies, um, and and because of that, uh, affecting uh, the general public who buy houses and who uh, are, are uh, you know who are out there. And there there are neighbors, our friends, and and everything. And there are some major there's some major underlying trends that are changing everything. So um, my company uh, is is named Tactile. I'm the the co-founder and CEO. Uh, we deliver industrial software for uh, what are referred to as frontline workers, which is really deskless workers, right? People that do not sit behind a desk all day like me um, and who are out there either working in the field or working in factories or they're, maybe they're in defense or maybe they're in um, manufacturing. 
they might be um, they might even be uh, in the medical profession out there in the field or and basically anyone who is out there doing work that starts with their hands and with their eyes right they they see things and they have to do processes and our particular focus is on uh, the ability for people to very easily capture their knowledge. Um, there are there are some major issues that are going on in the industrial world right now around older workers retiring in much greater numbers than younger workers are who are going into the trades um, that are supported by community colleges and, and technical colleges. There's a really big gap there that's referred to as the skills gap. Uh, in the industrial environment. And with a solution like our, our product, which is called Manifest, we make it very easy for non-technical subject matter experts, so non-computer savvy subject matter experts to uh, just do their job and in doing their job are creating content that can be used for by anyone to uh who may be uh either un uh, uh untrained or undertrained to do a job as well as if they were an expert and our mission uh as a company is to make everyone an expert that's that's what we uh that's what we strive to do there's a scene in in the matrix the movie the matrix where you know the two main characters trinity and neo are standing on top of this building and they have to get into this helicopter and, and save Morpheus. And uh, Neo um, uh, says to Trinity, hey, do you know how to fly this thing? And she says, hold on a second. And she picks up her phone and she says, hey, I need a pilot program and blinks her eyes a couple of times and says, let's go. That sort of downloadable knowledge or downloadable uh, understanding is something that is really um, possible with our solution. So I'm just going to um, show a few different videos or excuse me, a few different uh, photos and, and sort of walk you through what those are. But first, a couple of stats. 20 million uh, and more baby boomers are going to be retiring by the year 2026. These are the ones who are the experts who are in these industrial leadership jobs in, in these types of environments. And they're going to be retiring. With them goes generations of knowledge. Um, uh, pair that with the fact that among millennials and, and sort of first time workers, there's a 30 to 50% attrition rate within the first three years of working on a job. So new workers coming into the, into the workforce, they're, they're much less likely to stay there. Now, the, the knee jerk reaction might say, well, they, they just don't know how to work the same way that us old guys know how to work, but, but that may not be the case. The workplace has become uh, much more uh, much more lean and sometimes environments, you know, they're, maybe they're not getting paid the same type of wages because they're not part of the union. There's a lot of dynamics behind that, but those are the facts. Those are the numbers. 23% um, of unplanned manufacturing downtime results from human errors. So if you can reduce or eliminate those errors, you've gone a long way to reducing the downtime that manufacturers have and making those environments more safe. And the average cost of unplanned downtime uh, for a manufacturer across the industry is $260,000 per hour, right? That's that's manufacturing. That's a very specific stat. Uh, that's, a, that's a broad stat, but the fact is it's very substantial. So I'm going to show you, like I said, a couple of different uh, uh, photos. The first photo here is uh, the usage of our application in a military maintenance environment. So you, here you have a military maintainer who is actually working on a tank and who's looking at a step-by-step -step process that has been authored by someone that allows them to sort of follow along that process. So what you see here, if you see uh, uh, you see someone wearing a headset. This, in this case, this is something called the HoloLens. It's a Microsoft product. There's a number of other solutions out there. And this window that he is seeing, along with the leader lines, draws attention to where the work needs to be done and gives that person exact step-by-step -step processes as to how to do that. Now, in each one of those steps, you can access video, voice, schematics, 
everything that you would need that you would normally maybe you can imagine holding a laptop up to an environment and moving around but this person needs to use their hands and they need a transparent plane to look at as they're going through second example here this is in a manufacturing uh, plant up here in the in the Seattle area which is where I'm calling in from you have a worker who is is uh, working on assembling a, a piece of equipment again is presented with a set of step-by-step -step instructions and as you can see looking up to the upper right they're watching a video as to how this is done they can watch that as many times as they want um, and you can compel that user once they have watched the video or gone through the step to capture evidence that they've done things correctly. They can take a video of themselves using, uh, doing this process. You can take a before and after picture, you can take a reading, like a pressure reading or whatever the appropriate evidence is that, that goes on. Um, next slide, this is in a utility plant. This is actually in a wastewater treatment plant where a, 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 a woman here is working on a diesel engine which uh, helps to drive some pumps in, in this facility. And she is in the process of authoring or capturing her knowledge. Here she is on step seven. You can see she has placed various leader lines uh, to the piece of equipment and she's deciding what type of content to capture. Again, if, if it takes someone normally 10 minutes to do a job, maybe it takes them half an hour to capture their knowledge and once that knowledge has been captured um, that knowledge lives in perpetuity as long as the enterprise is using uh, you know is using this type of technology and can be accessed by anyone so if they have if, if this company has a thousand of these engines scattered around the world in different facilities any time that this job needs to be done on any one of those uh, those engines some, someone can just pull up this um, this template and follow along. And then finally, I wanted to put one uh, little screenshot in here around uh, what this looks like in uh, an office environment. This is a, a, a printer, uh, the dreaded printer toner changer problem, right? This is something that uh, probably is second only to IKEA instructions that every uh, you know, that, that normal Americans sort of like have to deal with on a daily basis. And, and I bring this up because number one, it talks about the various ways that you can sort of lay out step-by-step -step processes, including decision trees. So being able to observe what you see and then get instructions that, that take you down, you know, either or sort of routes, but also that this technology is not just applicable in an in industrial setting, it's involved in any time someone is doing a job in the physical world, not typing along in a keyboard and using a mouse and that sort of thing. So those are just that, those are, in case you've never seen augmented reality technology before, what it really is, this enables basically a heads up display, but a heads up display that has a contextual understanding of, of, of what you are working on. And right now, the, the technology tends to be fairly large and bulky and specialized for the enterprise, but this technology is evolving rapidly. You've probably seen some news how much uh, uh, money and, and effort companies like Facebook and Google and Apple are putting into this. Every single one of these large companies is gonna have some level of interaction with uh, augmented reality technology, and it's going to be a game changer for, for everyone. And this is, you all may know, remember Google Glass, right? That was that, that was very early on. There were a lot of privacy issues and everything. And we have evolved substantially in the last, I guess that was 2009 when Google Glass came out. So that was 12 years ago. Like our ideas of privacy, our ability to enable privacy and ensure privacy and just what we are, are, are willing to uh, to um, to use and to accept in our our world is changing rapidly. And this technology, this is a genie out of the bottle technology. It ain't going back in. Yeah, that's actually that's really exciting. I mean, it's I've been a technologist and a technology fan, you know, from as long as I can remember. But to see what I think you just said was it's it's really interesting to think about 2009 was google glass 
12 years that is a long time technology has just gone changed so much consumer behavior expectations millennials are no longer the young people right the, the youngest group in the in the room they're now you know the people making up first time home buyers they're in their 30s or having families they're, it's very different like the the world has changed in the in the past 12 years and so it's, it's around this what you know i find fascinating is in the last one you showed the uh, the printer and you know the average. So, when do you think this is going to affect the everyday um, person, right? So, when am when am I gonna am I gonna use this one? Am I gonna use this at home to learn how to cook a, a hamburger or a steak or to put together my uh, IKEA uh, you know bed frame? Is that is this do you, do you see this getting down that far down the the chain? I do. Yeah. Yeah. The the I mean the the thing that you you have to I'll, I'll go back to the very uh, early stages of our development in in this uh, area the first thing that you have to ask your question is is this a two dimensional problem or a three dimensional problem if it's a two dimensional problem and you can just look at your phone and you can understand something then um, then the benefit of an augmented reality headset that has a level of spatial understanding May may be uh, may be marginal. Like, do you need that uh, to 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 read a text message or whatever? But imagine I have a pair of glasses like this, and I have a chipset in that, or I have a, a these are tethered via Bluetooth to a phone that has the ability to process that, and I have this technology that sort of pops up to, in, in front of my eyes, and I have a 5G network that is very reliable, very fast. Um, and is connected to all sorts of other things. Um, the the opportunities are limitless. We 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 don't know what we don't know yet. There's a lot of companies that are working on really nailing this uh, user experience. But like I, I actually love to cook and I love to follow recipes. And I know that. I'll have my cooking area all set up and then my book will be over there and I'll have to look over there. And by the time I get over here, I'm like, what did I do? Like, if I can just look at that and understand it, like, yeah. I think that's actually a really great use case. The IKEA assembly use case, that's obviously a real use case. The, the question is like, is this the end all be all? You know, it's not, right? It's an It's part of an ecosystem, right? Like, I'm sitting in front of a, I'm sort of old school in this way. I have a desktop computer, but I also have a laptop computer. I have an iPad and I have an iPhone and I use all of them, right? And and, and so the, the thing to understand is like, when is the right time for the particular tool that you use, right? Do I want to just sit here and like, for example, right now the keyboards have been around that just project onto your, onto your desktop, um, you know, a, a, a visual light field that you can type on it. Those have been around for like 20 years. Do you use one? No, I don't use one because like, I don't want to type on my, on my desktop. It doesn't feel natural. I have a big ass like mechanical keyboard cause I got big hands and I, I, I just like, I, it, it, it works better for me. So uh, am I going to sit with my family in the living room on movie night? And we're all going to watch it in our headsets. No, we're going to have a nice flat screen TV and we're going to do that. So, so, uh, uh, but without question, this technology will permeate into every aspect of our society. No, no, I think it's a really good answer. I, in, interesting. I think what you said was, you know, there's this, people talk about being in business to business. So I was in business to consumer, right? So I was, I was a lender and I sold to consumer. So I was in business to consumer. Now I'm in business to business. And the reality is there really is no different because it's always a consumer. And it's always someone else's experience on the other side of the phone, desk, world, how they're experiencing you, your company, your product, your service. So we're really talking about these experiences. And I think what you said was true. I'm like you, I have all the devices. And you're right, I use them all, not all the time, but at different times. And you know, I think that the key to that is, and, and we're seeing this in you know all markets, Customers want to be able to interact with you on their time and their terms, right? That they want they want to be able to, if it's 10 o'clock at night, they want to have a question or they want to send something over or check on something. They want they want that access on the weekends. They want that always on experience because 
Amazon has definitely delivered that for us as it's always on experience. You know, one of the things you said I thought was interesting, um, this kind of relates to the mortgage industry, but it's just quickly the data side of this. So there's going to be, you know, I, I look at this, you know, we view the control and access to data as very, very, very fundamental to a company being successful. Understanding what's going on, everything around their data, being able to get more data, right? So are people going to, I mean, in essence, you're going to be able to wear this like a Google Glass. If you wear, if you work, in, if you're doing a, something, you're going to have access to all this data now visually and at your fingertips, probably faster than easier than you do now. Is that going to change you know, the consumption from consumers? You think? Are, are we using going to use more data that way? Oh, for sure. I mean, the the uh, again, this is um, right now. We uh, we don't have networks that are capable of handling the input of uh, of billions of sensors and, uh, and and nor do we have the systems in place nor do we have nor do those systems have logic that uh, that that will um, you know sort of provide a high fidelity um, just intrusive enough but not overly intrusive experience like you think about th this movie minority report if you, if you saw as tom cruise is walking through and he's and and the ads change as he walks by that 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 seems like an overly intrusive environment but that sort of technology is is going to be available and sometimes you want that right what if you're like walking around disney disney world with your kids and you're trying to find where there's a bathroom or where there's um where, where there's food or you're trying to find some ride that you're going to and you by the way at the same time you want to see how long the line is at that ride and you want to reserve your space for that ride like you're going to the dmv like the same thing like all of these things i mean it, it, it these are the macro sort of trends that are going on right now are cloud computing uh, ai which are basically intertwined with one another they they're they're um they're mutually dependent um devices uh, and and then networking right and um and all of these things are going through quantum leaps right now in, in ways that it's probably not uh, apparent to the everyday person who who is you know who's not steeped in this in, in this environment but all of this stuff is conspiring to make that uh new world available now i'd say the one one of the things that i think is a good thing is that i do think that government and regulators um, are starting to understand how big of an impact this is and they're they, they are if they are not yet caught up or or yet is also a strong word but if they're not caught up which they're not um i think that they are becoming aware that this is an area that we need to make sure that we ensure um privacy and safety you know of our of our, our children and our, our our identities and stuff like that and so I, I have, even though this sounds very uh, dystopian, sci-fi, I, I think that there's a lot of good companies that are out there that are doing the right thing. And I think that the good companies that are doing the right thing are working with the regulatory agencies to make sure that these are positive experiences for the general public. No, it's interesting. I mean, what we're really talking about, you know, is just customer experience or just our experience with humans is going to rapidly change over the next 10 20 years you know i remember i read an article in 2000 in the red heron magazine which is like a tech magazine and it said that we hadn't really even understood what the technology revolution means to mankind um, in 2000 that it was like 2010 we'd get a glimpse of it 2020 would it actually be something where it really impacted people's everyday lives and made things more convenient which we're there now I mean, it, this last year, technology has definitely shown that it's making people's lives more convenient. You know, for those who hadn't already used the convenience of technology, they've now uh, adapted to it. And so, you know, in our mortgage space, we're seeing a lot of that, um, where customers are they're really demanding more than what used to be. Like, if I go in and I have this new experience, I, I don't want to go back to having some archaic way. And I, I, the truth is, there's probably not a more archaic industry than the mortgage industry right now. I mean, the amount of documents that get signed more than once and paperwork gets requested more than once and people involved in a tra transaction, you have, you know, 
a checker, you know, the loan officer can look at a W-2, then a junior processor, then a processor, then an underwriter, then maybe a, a shipper or funder or QC person or post call. You can have like seven, eight people look at the same piece of paper to verify the same thing. I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy. Those things are going to change, you know, and so what we're really working on is how do we put, give lenders the platform to adapt to all these changes? How do we control the data? How do we help them manage data flow, interactions, give them insight in their data so they can really, you know, manage the, the flow of the customers? And that's really, I think, what, you know, we're, we're seeing a lot right now is people's expectations are just really, really, really changing. And I think this is, you know, really highlights. I hope lenders are paying attention to of why this is important. It's because, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, a smartphone wasn't a thing. And now it's everything. Social media wasn't a thing, and now it has more media than television. I mean, it, these things change, and, and technology is changing it rapidly. The mortgage industry right now is going through that transformation, um, and it's starting to change rapidly. We have more money, more people, more technology that have been poured in the mortgage industry over the last several years than have in the previous, you know, 50 years. So now is, you know, really a good time for lenders to look at what's the platforms they're using, what are, how are they addressing uh, the customer, and really have to reimagine the borrower experience. The customer journey. I mean, if I have those Google glasses or, or VR glasses, I could I can envision a world. Maybe you can, Dirk, tell me this is right. Where I go to do a, a, a walkthrough of a home, and I'm as I'm walking through their home, I, it's to give me information about the house. Maybe it's telling me how old the refrigerator is, or what type of pipe in the house has, or what the square footage of the home is, or neighborhood stats. But you know, I could literally get some information in real time data. You know, it, you know, see in front of me, so I have. I don't have to go to my phone or I don't have to stop what I'm doing. I can kind of work and see the same information. I mean, do we see a world like that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, when I think about um, the, you know, as a consumer of uh, the mortgage industry, you know, buy, buying houses, um, uh, although it's been a long time since I bought one, we've been in this house for almost 20 years, um, although we did just refinance. Um, you know, I, I think about the inspection process, right? Like what if an inspector walking through didn't have to have a clipboard or an iPad or, or anything and could just walk through and could capture information about um, what was going on, maybe even from a distance uh, automatically zoom in to see some of the areas um, on in higher points of a house or something like that, just to, like again, I don't know what's important for inspectors, but like this sort of uh, of uh, job, like again, I, I I come back to the enterprise very quickly. That's my my DNA. So uh, the things that you're talking about, that's the flip side of it. And if you have good data on one side, you're gonna have good data on the other side, and you're gonna have better experiences. I mean, there's a, I have a um, a good friend who runs a um, a legal blogging company and he is um, uh, his platform uh, is just talking about how uh, artificial intelligence is going to completely change the way that the legal industry works because you can process so much more data and you can review so much more casework by uh, through uh, artificial intelligence that um, that it's it's going to completely change those jobs. And by the way, typically these these technologies, it, it does happen sometimes that they sort of decimate entire industries. But typically these technologies uh, create new opportunities in industries. It may it may change the focus uh, of where uh, of where work is done. But with our solution in particular, we talk about how our, our uh, technology is enabling and, um, and extending uh, both the life of the worker and, and as well as the, the enterprise. This is not a replacement technology. This is not the robot revolution coming to take everyone's jobs. This is how do you let people do jobs that they've never done before, right? And, and when, you, when you start to think about that, that whole ecosystem, and you know, you, you think about how that's going to change jobs uh, and, and process. It, it really 
opens up a ton of opportunity for creative thinking and it breaks down barriers. So if, if, if people are sitting there and thinking that they have deep moats uh, around their process and technology, that's probably not the case. Now, different moats can be built, right? And, and th those, those protections can be done, but, but, um, but it's going to allow people to be much more creative and, and to apply new creative thinking to old school uh, processes, uh, perhaps like uh, the one we're talking about here. You know, it's great. Um, I think it's, I think the message I think that lenders should really walk away from this is technology is going to change the mortgage industry over the next three years more than it did over the last 20. Um, the speed of just consumers, um, you mentioned AI that's going to come in the mortgage industry, platforms like us that really help manage people's customer experience, like hasn't, no one's been able to do that in the past. These new bits of technologies, new platforms, it really is going to change. So, you know, lenders have been have been able to get away with not having to invest in technology if they have a really good sales force that can go out there and get loans. And all they really have to do is figure out how do I process these loans? Now, what we're seeing is lenders are, you know, the market's changing. Technology is really rapidly growing. So, you know, this has been really exciting. Uh, Dirk, I really appreciate you. Um, uh, joining this and from lenders again listen think about your technology imagine where the market's going to go know that it's going to change these things are real um, augmented reality and even virtual reality all those they're they're fascinating and they're going to be prime time and and you know which means all the rest of our technology needs to be brought up to date your customer in three years from now is not going to want to do the transaction the same way they did it with you for the last 30 years if you don't rapidly change that transaction you're going to lose the customer Right, you're going. They're, they're going to go somewhere else. You're not going to get repeat business. And those lenders who do that effectively are going to absolutely grow. I would imagine over the next three to five years, we see some new top ten lenders in the United States. I see. I we, as far as origination side, maybe not include wholesale and TPO, but purely origination side, I think we see new players come in the market that actually take some serious market share because of the use of technology in a new way. So, thank you all for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that uh, very much. And if you haven't heard, we are excited that after two years of having the Mortgage Innovators Conference virtual, we will be back in person in 2022. And um, it is definitely going to be an experience you are not going to want to miss. So for conference updates and details, you can check out mortgageinnovators.com forward slash conference. That's mortgageinnovators.com forward slash conference. Also a big thank you to our sponsors at Qualia who make these episodes possible. So look forward to seeing you at the uh, conference and until next time. <laughs>